want to just kind of just, I like praise and worship. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sandy, all of you. I want to talk to you. Father in heaven, we ask you for a special word of wisdom. We thank you for this time together around your word. We thank that you've already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven that places in Christ Jesus. You have anointed us. You have established us. We have comprehension. We have perception. We have discernment. The discernment of the spirit. All these gifts and the talents and skills you have given to us in Christ Jesus. But you said, ask for wisdom. How to use all this. How to put it together and make it work for you in this world. And I will... And we'll work out our salvation with fear and trembling. For it is you who are willing to do of your good pleasure. Because the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. And for this we thank you. In the name, show us how to live every day even more and more victoriously. In every way possible. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And cause it to be today that it is as if we have gone all the way to heaven and back experiencing your power and your glory and your presence and your peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and everybody said amen. amen said amen again all right second chronicles chapter 6 and verse 22 then we will go to Ezekiel 18 20 second chronicles chapter 6 and verse 22 If anyone sins against his neighbor, because we all miss it, sin means to miss the mark, and is forced to take an oath, because some people will change their minds, repent, and apologize, and ask forgiveness without having to be told. But for people you have to go into a confront, that's what he's talking about. And it's, you got to force them to almost put them under oath to tell the truth. And then comes to take an oath before your altar in this temple. Solomon prays at the dedication of the temple. Then God, I want it to be as if you hear all the way from heaven, like Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear all the way from up here in heaven. Then hear all the way from up here in heaven, Lord. And then act from there and judge your servants. Under the Old Testament, we're servants. Under the New Testament, we are sons. Bringing retribution, that is recompense, recovery. Remember David um, was at Ziglag and his family was taken. And uh, they were captured by the Philistines. And so David went to the church and went to the priest and asked him, shall I go back and get my family? And what do I do? How do I do it? And the priest uh, consulted, uh, consulted the Lord. And the Lord, through the priest, told David, go get it and you shall recover what you shall recover it all that's what he's talking about here you shall recover it all then it's retribution it is translated vengeance vengeance is uh, retaliation it's a retaliation as recompensation recon recom recompensation you might say it's the recovery It's to take something back It's to get it back and uh, wow and Jesus said I have come that they may have life and they might get it back and have it how? More abundantly. He says, then bring some retribution. Bring some vengeance, he says, on the wicked. By bringing, and notice this phrase, this one little phrase, bringing what? His way. So who's, who's doing it? His way. His way, where? In case you get it twisted, make sure you don't get it twisted. It's on his what? His, and then he makes it his what? Possessive. His own head. So there are things that we can do to bring things on our own what? Head. That's a wicked thing. Then he says this. And what? Justifying. That's the word of Zadik. Justifying. Okay. That's the participle form of the word doing it. Justifying what? The righteous. The word righteous is the same word Zadik. But they couldn't say justifying the justified. Okay. Justifying the justified by what? Give, also what? Giving to him according to his own what? Righteousness. And righteousness again three times. Justif justifying righteous righteousness 
all three words are the same word in a different form. You'll find this throughout the scripture. One word can be used many ways. We understand that in the English language. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. Ezekiel 18 and 20. And next we will go to 33, 12. Ezekiel 18 and 20. This is a wonderful passage. You all could take, make sure you just look at Ezekiel 18 because it's, it, it, the, it's the where the son shall not bear the guilt and punishment, the iniquity of the father and vice versa. It's a wonderful passage to study. I wish I had done it a long time ago. And here we go to Ezekiel 20. Read, the soul who misses the mark, seeing is what? Missed the mark. Now, it's only the soul who what? Misses the mark, who sins shall die. And here's the mark that he says you want to be careful about missing, not missing. And this mark, now watch this. The soul who misses the mark shall what? Die. Go on. Now we're going to look at that word sin for a moment. Now I want to look at this just for, to help you out. Look in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 16. Now I'm coming right back to this. And the if you can, however you want to do that, if you can get to eight, uh, Matthew 18, uh, 11, 18, Matthew 11, 18, we're going to talk about this missing the mark for a moment and how Jesus comes uh, to take every area of where our lives where we miss the mark. Now watch what happens in, in how he associates with people who miss the mark. you find this in Matthew 11 and verse 18. Let's read. Uh, uh, Matthew says what? John came and he did, he did not associate and he didn't eat nor did he who? Drink. Okay. And y'all got a problem with that. Y'all say what? That man got a demon in him. See sometimes, see if you don't eat, if you got a, you, you're a vegetarian or you say somebody say you, uh, you got a whole lot of hang-ups about what you eat. Sometimes some people have roadkill and turtles and du uh, squirrels and rabbits and, you know, I mean, if it, if it, if it hops, it's, it's, you better look out. And uh, so they, they got to hang up about things they eat. They don't eat. I don't eat this. I don't, I don't eat after 6 o'clock. And that's good. But it's good not to eat after 6 o'clock if you can manage that. Because you won't go to bed on a full stomach and dream everything and tell the Lord talk to you. John came and he didn't eat with y'all. And he didn't drink wine with y'all. And y'all say, he got a, something wrong with him. He got a demon. You know what? People will always find something with whatever you do. And y'all say, he got a demon. He's full of the devil. I don't know why he's acting so crazy. Next, next verse. Then he says this. Read. The Son of Man came. Jesus came what? And he came what? Eating and. Well, now, well, well you say, well, what was he drinking? We won't get into that. That's another topic. Well, I'm sure he didn't drink it by the gallon because he made it by the, by the tank full. He made a big vat of it and, all of, and they had a big wedding party. But another thing is see, in the Son of Man, Son of Man came what? He came eating and he came drinking. And the same people open their mouths and say what? Look, you are what? You're eating too much. The church folk just get together and eat all the time. That's all they can do. They, they can't do nothing but eat, so they just eat. They're eating, they're gluttonous. And they also, while they're glutton, they, have, they wash it down with some what? Some wine. And they, be, they, they tear along at the wine. So, this is in your Bible. And then it says, he is a what? Friend. Philos. He's a friend. Because I guess his religious folk, like John, were not eating or drinking. But he came <laughs> eating and drinking. And guess who was he was partying with? The tax collectors. You know who the tax collectors are? The, you remember Noah's government in Genesis chapter 6? And that's the covenant of human governments, this dispensation of human governments. And Noah got drunk as soon as he got off that boat. And uh, his offspring are all of the political systems, the system of political governments that we have. And uh, I just put these two together. Nobody told me that. Just kind of teased them a little bit, you know. The, the, the politicians are known for drinking, you know. And, uh, but he was a friend of these people. Matthew is one of them. He is a tax collector. And he's a friend of a tax collector. But you've got to win him. And these same people who had problems with the one, not John, not drinking and eating. 
And then they got a problem with him who does drink and eat. Not only is he a friend of tax collectors, but also is a, sin, a friend of who? Sinners. But if you're trying to win somebody, there's a ringing in here. If you're trying to win somebody, uh, he says, listen, y'all can think what you want to, interpret it how you wish. But he says, wisdom. If you're trying to reach somebody, wisdom is what? Justified. Hey, that's, that's the same word. It's declared right. It's just right, real good, and the proper thing to do by people who are full of it, uh, who are the, the, re, uh, full, abound, and yeah, resemble the light. You need your outline in a moment. But wisdom is what? Justified by the ones who use it, who, who, who live. Now, you, you can't tell a person is wise unless you see them living it, and then you know they're wise by children. And so, he was a tax, those he missed, now go back, if you will, to uh, Ezekiel 18 and verse 20. So he says, now read, the soul who sins, and Jesus came to save everybody who y'all call what? Sinners. Are you listening? I'm just taking my time, this is going on. He came to save sinners. Go on. The son, read, shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Listen to me. That's the end of the generational curse. Don't let nobody sell y'all this lie that everything your folks did is affecting you today and that's why you act the way you are. Here's a verse that counsel, here's a counsel to that. It counsels that out. And read, nor what? The father does what? Bad the guilt of the son. So you got to make up your mind, I don't care what has happened to everybody who came before me. I am not going to be bound by their choices that they made. You can do that. If you want to. And then he makes this, here we go to Zadik again. Zadik is righteous. How you uh, do things that is just right, real good, through faith. He says what? The righteousness, the Zadik of the Zadik, the Zadika of the Zadik shall be where? Upon himself. And the wickedness of the wicked. Now, it would just seem good to me to say the righteousness or the righteous acts, the righteous acts, or the, but they say, well, righteousness, same thing. The righteous actions or the righteous activity or the righteous deeds, the good deeds of what? A good person or a righteous person shall be upon him. But they didn't say him. They intensify it and say, and they intensify it and say, "What the righteousness of the righteous shall be not only upon him, but upon what himself, because of something he has done." Then it says, "And the wickedness of the righteous shall be upon him, not him, but, but upon what himself." Now go with him, if you will, to chapter thirty-three and verse twelve. I don't know where this is this. Ezekiel 33 and 12. Thirty-three, twelve. Read. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, the offspring of your people, go on, the righteous, the Zadik, the righteous activity, the righteous deeds, the righteous Motivations and things like that. What? Of those who are what? Of a righteous man. The righteous man. You can be righteous. Say, I can be righteous. I can be Say, righteous. I am righteous. I am righteous. See, you, when a righteous person, you, to be right, it means to be, uh, we can look at that a moment, but I'll just, to be right means to be um, logical, it's mutual, and it's also um, reasonable. It's factual. It's factual. So it's right, it's factual. Now, and then you're right and it's factual, and it's righteous means you're full of it. Now, the righteous activity of righteous people shall what? Not deliver him when? And the day he decides, I don't want to do that no more. And I encourage you all last week, y'all better get back in the saddle. Just get back to what your daily activity. Don't let the world sell you a bill of goods and don't you buy the dumb lie. Because it's like in the garden where God said to Adam, Adam, where are you? 
And then he said, well, and God, the second question, well, have you eaten of the tree that I told you all not to eat of? And the answer is, yeah. And sometimes we can, un, you can let some things slip and don't realize it, and you start eating off a tree that the Lord told you, listen, don't eat off that tree. The tree of the knowledge is about good and evil. This is good to do this, it's not about that. Just, just, no. And then he says what? And shall not deliver him in the day when he decides he's not going to do that righteousness activity anymore. Read, as for the wickedness of what? Of the wicked, he shall not what? Fall, even though he's been crooked for 35, 45 years. Been messed up and just tore up from the flow up. He shall not what? Fall because of it in the day that he what? Turns what? From what? His wickedness. He was doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. And Jesus was partying with these people. The tax collectors, the gluttons, and the wine bibbles. Sometimes we go to church too long and all of our friends are around us. We don't even know nobody that not, might not be a Christian. And they, we don't, you got to get out into the world. You got to get out into the world. You need to stay out there in the world. So you can see one lady in this ministry went to it. She was, we were out in the world. And we were on this program. And this lady went to this lady's house because we have this program. And they parked on this lady's grass. And the lady came, I came and we came to the house and she cussed out my employee. My employee told me, I ain't going back there no more. I said, do you want your job? I ain't going back there, Pastor. I said, well, all right. You've got to make up your mind. I told her, I said, and listen, sister, let me tell you something. When you're in the world, sometimes it's good to get cussed out. You get, it's good to be, get your cussing out. Because you can figure out how much religion you got. You can see how much faith you got. Seeking you, seeking, seeking you handle a good cussing out. You ain't, some of y'all ain't, why are you hollering over there, Mary? <laughs> see, if, uh, sometimes, see, if you ain't been cussed out in a long time, you might, you might think, you might, you know, think, you think you saved and going to heaven. But if you, if you got you got to exercise some patience and some perseverance and some self-control and to temperament and some te temp you got to uh, temper yourself. You got to hold yourself back on an echo. You have to, you want to retaliate, but you don't, you, you know, you got something. You got some keeping power. It's called the power of the Holy Spirit. To put you in a class all by yourself because you didn't res respond and retaliate like everybody else. Or like quit your job and just walk off and I ain't going back no more. Sometimes a good cuss and I just turn to somebody and say, have you had one lately? <laughs> you find out what you got. You find out how much praying you got. You're always talking about Jesus. I got Jesus and that's enough. Find out. Find out how much Jesus you got. Can you take a good tongue lashing? And hold your peace. But you get that out in the world. But you protect it up in here. Among the saints. And so it's good. To be, and so Jesus said do business until I come. Go out there among the people and do business in the world. They talk all kind of ways. They do a whole lot of things. But we get so separated. And so we still separated from the world. Paul says it like this. Listen. I don't. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I hope I can find it real quick. I will find it. Yeah, I have it. Um, he says, oh, Lord. About the man who, um, he said, you'd have to go all out of the whole world if you're going to try to get away from that. It's in, um, The man who was, uh, I wrote to you not to uh, have fellowship. Yeah, here you go. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 5, 9. Let's, oh, my, my help is helping me read. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Because there was a man in the church. 
And he was living with his daddy's wife, his stepmama. And they started living together and had a sexual relationship. And they become a husband and wife, so to speak. And they were the church. Didn't say nothing about that thing. It says, go read. Yet, I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people. Where? Oh, this world. Now, see, that's the whole point. We don't think we're supposed to mix with any sexually immoral people, period. Now, here's the ex explanation. Read. Or with those who are covetous. Covetous is pleonexia. You mean you want to have something. You're you still buying clothes. You got a closet full. You're still buying shoes. You got shoes to the full. You're still buying junk. You got junk to the full. And you want everything you see. And you go to the mall. You just still just get stuff. You're covetous. You're just covetous. You want to have it to the full. And you don't need no more stuff. Then take that money and give it to the kingdom. Use it for God's purpose in the world. To make a difference and change the world with that money. And what? Extortioners. That's the word kleptos. We get the word kleptomania. Kleptomaniacs. Extortion. They, they, they swindle money out of you. There's some people in the church like that. They'll borrow money from you. Now they can't steal it. But they'll ask you to lend it to them. With no intent to paying it back. That's a kleptomaniac. That's a thief. And then they go up the other aisle and don't shake your hand and act like they ain't ever seen you before. You don't know any people like this. They're out in the world. Extortionists or what? Idolaters. They, have this Im they love images. Image. They want to be like somebody else. They want to act like somebody else. They want to talk like somebody else. They want to walk like somebody else. They want to buy things like other. They want to have what's on. No. You, I, it's idolatry. Look, giving the image, give service to this image. What kind of image you want to create? You know, trying to, it's like trying to be like the Joneses. You heard that expression? That's what it's about. And what? Since then, if that's the case, you're trying to get away from these kind of people, read. You would need to go where? Totally where? Out of the world. You ain't going to never get away from this. So a good cussing out is good for you. You go to mingling with the people in the world and they have drunk or whatever, they, they, they read you. They tell you, they tell you about, they tell you about yourself. The saints going to just walk in love. Well, them people out on the street, they're going to let you have it. You ain't as much as you think you ain't. They'll tell you. But now that I have written to you not to keep company with what? Anyone who named or called themselves a what? A brother. And they're going to live in the church with their daddy's wife. You say, well, when did they get married? Well, he, no, she was married to his daddy. And with the covetous, their brothers, they're in the church, but they still covet. They want your stuff. They don't want to have stuff like you. No, they want yours. And idolaters, and then revilers, hell raisers, and drunkards, and extortioners, not even to what? Eat with the people. You're calling yourself a brother, and you're acting like this. So I like being out in the world. It's, it's good for you. And sometimes uh, when you get a good customer, I come and give a testimony. To let us know how you handle it. <laughs> she still got the job, by the way. She still got the job. And those righteousness that we just looked at, and thirty-three twelve. Did we look at thirty-three twelve? Did we look at Ezekiel thirty-three twelve? All right. Now. I want you to turn to Romans 10. I'm going to look at 13 verses. I want to talk to you about this righteousness. The righteous actions, the righteous deeds, the righteous behavior of a righteous person is going to be on his own head. Can't nobody take this from you. If you decide this is what you want. The devil try to talk you out of it. Your own mind and emotions and thought and old nature will try to do sabotage it. And uh, there are, I found there are four kinds of righteousness. 
Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse, I had it written, but Matthew 5 and verse 6. She's quick, ain't she? She's trying to read my mind. Let's read. Blessed. And the Lord, remember in Genesis where the Lord said, and he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. The word blessed means to be highly, risk, highly, and God blessed them. He venerated them. The veneration, the profound respect, and honor and appreciation. Okay? God has a profound respect for those who what? Hunger and thirst to do actions and deeds that are what? Just right, real good, the proper thing to do because they are what? Full, abound, and resemble the nature of what is just right, real good, and the proper thing to do. You can almost see it happening. And he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for this kind of lifestyle. You can almost predict them. And with this kind of lifestyle, you don't need anybody looking over your shoulder to make you do what's right. Because you, the Lord who lives in your heart is always with you and his spirit is right in your heart. So that's how you act out of that. Nobody has to tell you you need to be on time. You need to get up to go to work. You can't be doing a whole lot of things on the job. No, you, so now. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness. For they shall be what? Filled. They are full, what? They are bound, and they resemble the likeness. The they resemble the nature of it, okay? Now, I will look at Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. The first thing I want to look at is this word. Look at Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. Very familiar passage. Read, brethren, my heart's desire. Look at the possessive uh, now, my, the, the, or the what? The desire of my heart. You see how you take the, uh, take the prepositional phrase and just turn it into a possessive now? The desire of my heart, or my heart's desire, and the what? The prayer of my heart, or my heart's what? Prayer. Now, who is he praying to? God. See? You don't pray to people. God will use people and move people. You might ask people to help you or whatever, but you pray to God for what? Israel is that they may be saved. So, to, so, so, so. Next verse. Read. For I bear them witness. That's the first witness. Okay. That they have a zeal for God. They really, they're zealot. The word is zealot. Is, we get the word zealot. They have a zeal. They're very zealous for God. But they have, but it's not according to what? Knowledge. They don't know about it. They're just having a good, they, they're zealous. But they're ignorant. It's not based on anything. Next verse. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness. Now, the translators made this God's righteousness, but to turn it around is still what? The righteousness of God. Now I'll show you, watch this. Read, for they being ignorant of what? The righteousness of God. Are y'all with me? Read. And seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. They sound like a play on words and a pun, but it really is they being ignorant of the righteousness of God, how to display righteous acts, which are as if they are from God. They did not, and seeking to establish their own what actions that make it look like they are acting on God's behalf in the earth. They have not submitted to the real what? Righteousness of God. So it's there twice. Now, I call this the spiritualize it. Now, when you spiritualize something, the first one is spiritualize it. Spiritualize means, means to 
Say it with me. Spiritual eyes. To pre present some information. About something. In a way. That provokes public interest. And excitement. While maintaining. Accuracy. Correctness. And precision. Without sacrificing the integrity. And the facts. In other words, it, 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 you want to have some facts and it want to be pure. You don't want it to be mixed up with anything else. So spiritualized righteousness is where it's the spirit of God and you, you, you're acting out of a pure, uncorrupt motive. And uh, it's pure from corruption. Well, what in the world is corruption? Corruption is dishonest, fraudulent conduct by those who are in power. You hear sometimes you hear corrupt people in government are corrupt, corrupt governments all over the world. They're in power and they're dishonest and they're fraudulent. They have, they have fraudulent conduct by those in power. Typically, uh, they are involving bribery. You can buy them. Give them some money, you can buy them. So, when you're talking about God, you really want to be incorruptible you don't want to have it tainted smelling like something that ain't is not so again spiritualized righteousness where you when you're going to do something you want you don't want to you want to be neutral you don't want to be pushed by your feelings pushed by your thoughts pushed by your mind you want to be neutral out of a pure heart blessed are the pure and what heart but they can see God oh, use them in ways that they would not otherwise. You don't have any acts to grind. You don't have any motive. You ain't got no hidden agenda. You have to watch people when they want you to do something for them or they want to do something or they won't tell you the whole truth behind it. They'll just kind of hold it back and you figure out later, oh, that's why they wanted it. And so he says this. I'm going to show you some of these. Here's one. Read, uh, find these. Romans 1, 23. Is it two women here? Just fine. All right. Romans one twenty three is what? Romans one twenty three. We're going to look at uh, two three verses. If you can get that, she's quick. Romans one twenty three. Then First Corinthians fifteen forty two. Read, and they changed the glory of the who? The incorruptible God into the image like a corruptible man. In other words, they made it appear that God was dishonest, fraudulent in their conduct. And involved in bribery. Spiritualized righteousness. Look at 1 Corinthians 15 42. And then verse 50 after that. 1 Corinthians 15 42. He says, about us, 1 Corinthians 15 42. So also is, here we go, let's read. So also is the resurrection from the, of the dead. The body is sown in what? Corruption. It is raised in what? Incorrupt. Your body is corrupt. <laughs> in the flesh, you can be bought, you can be, you know, your body, you know, sometimes when you get an infection, that's corruption. Sometimes you get an infection or something, it's, it's, it's basically corruption. And he says, but our body is sown in corruption, but when we are raised by the Spirit of God, we have a new body, a spiritual body. It is what? It's not subject to, to decay. The, body, the spiritual body is not subject to decay, to loss, to sickness, disease, or anything else. Look at the next verse, which is uh, 52. It's raised what? In, that's verse, verse 50, if we don't have it. Did I miss 50? All right, look at verse 50. Go back to verse 50. Read. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does any what? Thing that is corrupt inherit what? The incorrupt stuff. The corrupt stuff cannot in a cor inherit. Uh, I mean, corrupt in, in corruption. You, you, gotta, you, you cannot. You got to understand that. Corrupt things does not benefit or, or inherit things that are pure and don't have any kind of corruption, which we say is um, 
fraudulent activity or dishonesty in, of those in power and influence. So there's there what? Nor does incorruption inherit incorruption. Nor does in, the corruption inherit incorruption. Mistype that. Verse 53. He says in verse 53, read, For this corruptible, that's us, the body, the things that we have in the world, must put on what? You got to change your corrupt activity because this is a part of your righteousness. Sleazy activity, business, the corrupt behavior. Just, just get, you got some things you got to do. Must what? Put on incorruption. In other words, avoid dishonest, fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involving bribery. And, to spirit, and we spiritualize it and make it look like that's people, there's some crooks in church. Y'all know that? Maybe not in here. We don't know that, do we? You see what I'm saying? Spiritualize it. We want to be spiritual. But start doing business with them. As a matter of fact, you really want to find out how a person really is. Live with them. Live with them. Go on vacation with them. Stay in the same house with them for about a week or two. You find out we some we something. <laughs> We're something. We're something. Look at verse 54. Look at verse 54. Read. Uh, verse 54. Read. So, read. Everybody. When this corruptible cor has put on what? In other words, who going to do the putting on? When you going to do it? You got to do it. Well, the Lord is going to No, uh-uh. So when this what? Corruptible person who is subject to being bribed who has no integrity, who is crooked, who is uh, fraudulent, has can be subject to fraud and deceit and dishonesty. In other words, it's presenting information in a way that, is, that provokes public interest and excitement while maintaining uh, accuracy, but they may uh, the opposite. This, he said, so when this what? Corruptible has put on what? Incorruption. And when this liable to die is mortal. Mortal means what? Liable to die. Mortal has put on what? Immortality with the idea, the reason I changed my ways is because I'm going to live like this forever and I need to change it now. Are you listening? Because I'm going to live forever, I don't want to live forever like I'm corrupt. You, 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 you know, you, we're born liars, born in sin and conceived in iniquity. We're just as crooked as a, we've all been messed up, real bad. There's something wrong with you. But, but that's why God gives you time to work it out. You got from one day to 120 years to work it out. Work out your salvation where? Here. Because when you leave, you ain't got, there is no more correction. So when this what? Mortal has put on what? Immortality. Then, read everybody, then shall be brought to pass the saying that has been written. Death, that's this corruptible part of you, has been what? Swallowed up by the victory that we can live without being dishonest. Amen. I think that's commendable. I think that's why my grandma beat me for lying. She tried to kill me. Look at 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. First Peter, oh my goodness, she's quick. Verse 4, read. We have, through Jesus Christ, we have what? An inheritance that is what? Incorrupt. It's not subject. You can't bribe anybody to get this thing. You are not. You can't get it through dishonest means. You not. There's no fraudulent activity that can cause you to get this. What we have, an inheritance that is what incorruptible and is also what undefiled, and that it does not fade away. And where it's its own res, it's reserved for you. All you gotta do is show up, and you got it reserved for you in heaven. Look at verse 23 of the same verse, same chapter. Verse 23, and go down to verse 25. I think that's what it is. Verse 23, read. Having been what? See, if when you come to a point where you can put away this uh, dishonest, this corruption business, and this fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involving bribery, when this what? When, having been what? Born again. Because once you can live and, and not succumb to 
nor be involved in, it is as if you have been born all over again. Because unless you've been born again, it's hard to do. Because you always got a little crooked little part in. I run into some crooks like that. I told a man two or three weeks ago, I said, you a crook. One lady called me, she said, Mr. Laidler, I need to, you to um, send me a three-day notice of eviction so that I can uh, get some our Florida money to pay my rent. I'm talking about in the world. And I said, well, I said, but you're not behind. She said, well, my, 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 I need to fix the motor in my car, and I need some money. So I need you to give me a letter, an eviction notice. I said, well, ma'am, I said, I can't help you be no crook. <laughs> some kind of way, you know she got some money? <laughs> she got eight or nine hundred dollars from about this fraud, this government business. They're giving away this money for the rent and all. People are just intentionally not paying their rent. Just so they can get behind. Just so that you can give them a three-day or 15-day notice. Just so they can qualify to get the money. And then they take their money and then about six months. You know they'll pay your money, they'll pay your rent three whole months at once. And then and three, mo three months individually into the future. They'll give you six months. You say, I didn't know that. I, I need to be. You're, this, we're talking about corruption now. No. <laughs> We're talking about corruption. <laughs> Dishonest, fraudulent conduct by those in power, typically involved, involving bribery. I had another lady tell me, Mr. Laidler, I like being out in the world. Mr. Laidler, uh, I, need, I need a letter so I can apply for some money on, on uh, our Florida. I said, well, ma'am, I said, but you own Section 8. They pay $900 a month. 100% of your rent. You're not even behind. I know it, she say. I say, well, why do you want the money? She say, well, because they're giving it away. <laughs> they're giving it away. I say, but, but you don't need it. She said, I know it. It's, I'm telling you, I guess you wonder why I preach some of this stuff. I got a bag I can pull out and just tell y'all, entertain y'all for days. I got one that's a doozy. There's some crooked people. That's righteous. See, that's wickedness. They are crooked. And the world is full of it, and the government try to make laws through internal controls to make sure that if you get five people who are not related to each other working together in an office, that one can't open the mail if, if they open it, if sign checks. The one who reconciles the account can't open, can't uh, reconcile the books. You know, internal controls. One who is in charge of the office, the internal controls. They think. This is the law. They think that if we get five people who are unrelated by blood and marriage, that we can have some integrity and avoid waste, fraud, and abuse. But they don't know five unrelated people can get in cahoots together and still steal. But you can take somebody who has been born again, who have made a decision as if, it's as if they have been born all over again. They're not subject to this corruption. They made up a mind about being dishonest and fraudulent conduct by those in power typically involving bribery. They say, I ain't going to steal it. It ain't mine. I don't want it. I'll fight you for mine, though. But I'll help you to get yours, too. And I'll fight for you. That's loving your neighbor. And I'll help you to get your, I'll fight for you to get yours. But you can have people, but they don't know the heart. No one knows the heart. I, want, I got one I could tell y'all, y'all wouldn't believe it. There are people like this. See, if you, if you go on and do business in the world, 
you'll find out you got the real thing. The only way you know you got the real Jesus and the real thing if you can be right in the middle of the cesspool and don't smell like it. Having been what? Born again. Read. Not of what? Corruptible sperm. That's what the word is, sperma. Seed. But what? Incorruptible implied sperm. Spiritualized righteousness. Go on. Through what? The word of God. That's the spirit. The words I speak unto you, they are life. And they are also spirit. And when you're born again of this kind of word, he says, and you what? It is as if you what? Live and this word what? Abides forever. Because once you're changed and born again, you live like this. And when you die, you're like this. And you go into heaven like this. You go into eternity with your righteousness. God, you think God going to let us in heaven crooked? For those, he said, I'll beat you with many stripes. <laughs> Chapter 3 and verse number 4. Chapter 3 and verse 4. Talk about the wives and their relationship to their husbands. And this is 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. It says what? Rather, let it, don't be the, the kind of brassy woman, but let it be what? The hidden person of the heart who, with what? With the, you know, instead of putting all this beauty, you know, you, it's bad to have a, a real fine, beautiful woman. And when she opens her mouth and displays her behavior, she's a pistol. That's a deception right there. <laughs> Who's that saying? What women in there talking about? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so, and with this incorruptible beauty, it's an, but when you when you are not subject to dishonesty and bribery and deceit, and you got integrity, and says, you know, it's spirit. It's a spiritual thing. It's a meek and a, a gentle and a what? A quiet spirit, which is very what? It's precious, very valuable, in the sight of God. He tell a young man in Titus chapter 2 verse 7 in Titus 2 7. See, y'all thought I was going to let the men out, off the hook, didn't you? I talked about the men. Now, you younger men, I exhort the younger men. Uh, this is Titus chapter 2 and verse 7. Tell the younger men, this is what I want you to do. To be patterns. Read. The younger men, Titus chapter 2 and verse 7. Read. And in all things, talk to younger men, in all things, what? Showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in, in doctrine, no, indoctrination, what you've been taught, and what? Integrity. And showing integrity. Now, notice the word integrity. I like this word integrity. So people don't take, don't, they think it's just me. You have integrity. You have, I have integrity. No, you can have bad integrity. The word is from what? Integrate. And you can integrate things together that don't go together. That's the whole thing about mixing seeds in the field. You don't mix your corn with your beans in the same, in the same ground. You don't mix your seed. He says, but showing what? And so what you have to do is you have to integrate principles into your life, like this one right here. You have to integrate the fact that I refuse to be dishonest, have fraudulent conduct by those in power, and typically involving bribery. I refuse to let you buy me. People think if they give you a plate of food, they can get you to come to a meeting. Oh, we're going to have the pastor, we're going to all give them dinner. And some pastors just run to the plate. I made up my mind. I ain't going to fall out with nobody over a plate of food. I'd rather give you the plate. Just go and have the food. You know. That's why I tell you, when we have a food, a cover, dinner here at the church, let the folks get their food. Let them, don't give it, issue it out with one. You, five of y'all standing right there with a spoon. Issue out beans like you're counting them. If you ain't got enough, don't have it. Let the people get it. Don't, don't fall out with nobody over plate of food. I don't see a whole lot of stuff. I don't say, bring a good cover dish. We got some plans. We got some plans. But anyway, so into, you can integrate different things into your life. I decided to integrate certain things into my life. And that's what he's talking about. Into, and what? Reverence. Piety. And what? Incorruptibility. You don't have the, you refuse to develop and you get rid of the ability to be what? Corrupt. You, it's a choice you make. That's a part of your what? Righteousness. Would you agree with that? Yeah. 
So then he says this, and back to chapter, Romans chapter 3 and verse 8, Romans chapter 10, verse 3, Romans chapter 10, verse 3. So he says, Romans chapter 10, verse 3, back to where we started. Two times in chapter 10 and verse number 3, read, for they being what? Ignorant of what? God's righteousness and seeking to establish what? Their own righteousness. They have not submitted what? To the righteousness of God. So now, being ignorant, they get their own righteousness. The kind of righteousness that I was talking about is this spiritualized righteousness that we just talked about. That you, you live in your integrity, biblical and moral integrity. And you don't try to push issues. You don't have to push issues. Because you're operating by the principle of God, and you're walking by faith, things don't fall into place because you're operating by principle. They will fall into place. He says, when a man's ways, this is what I'm talking about, pleases the Lord, he will make your enemies. You ain't got to try to find out, use a bribe to get over on somebody and try to get a cunning and working around. Them. No, 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 no. They're ignorant. And then look at C. They have not submitted to what? The righteousness of God. So I call that spiritualized righteousness. So the spiritual part of your righteousness is it's, it's, it's just, it's a spiritual thing. It's personal as internal, internally, where you have chosen to not be subject to bribery, dishonesty, and corrupt means, and uh, you're just not fraudulent in your conduct. Number two. Then the next one he says is what I call, this is in, in, right in the middle of that same verse, being ignorant of what? This kind that I just described to you and seeking to establish what? Their own. So if they don't under, have this kind of righteousness that they integrate and operate by, they will have what you call sensation, uh, I can, sensationalized. One is spiritualized. Number two is sensationalized. Now this is going to be a good one. And we, 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 we have, uh, uh, I grew up in the Methodist church, so we didn't have a lot of this. But when you go to the Pentecostal churches, boy, they can jump a while. And, we, we, and so sensationalized means to present information. Say it with me. Means to present information. Now, the information can be presented by the media. You have to watch these 10 Spies News Network down there on these, all these channels that you watch. They all got an angle, my friend. They all pushing something. They're like some of these doctors when you go get your physical. They ask you, you going to get your shot? I say, I don't believe in them. Well, you going to get your Shanga shot? I say, no. You going to get your flu shot? I say, no. He said, you going to get your vaccine shot? I say, no. He said, that's what I like about a man who knows what he wants. <laughs> Last time I went, he said, you know I'm a doctor. So I have to ask these questions. But he respects my decision. You hear where I'm coming from? So what I do? I take my vitamins, selenium, zinc, vitamin D. I take 40,000 vitamin Ds about three days a week. I took two lemons. I was going to bring that and show you that. Two lemons, cut them up, put them in my neutral bullet. Two whole lemons. They good. And mix them with some blueberries and some strawberries. Oh, it's all natural. It's good. And when you wake up in the morning, you all dry it out in here. You don't have no... Y'all know some of y'all be, you know, some of y'all be doing that. <laughs> you got phlegm and mucus. You be totally dried out, totally clear. So, and so they establish their own right. So it's sensationalized righteousness. When you don't have this spiritualized righteousness, you got to come up with something to prove that you are right in your mind, right with God. So it's sensationalized to read, to present information. Everybody, to present information. Now, it's whether it's the media, ministries can do this, men do this, and women do this, and mothers do this. Okay? Read about something in a way that provokes public interest and excitement at the expense of accuracy, accuracy, correctness, correctness, and precision. They'll leave out the facts. And they'll tell you, uh, 
You really want more of Jesus, you're going to have to come to the altar and you're going to have to tarry. Well, they read in Luke chapter 24 where Jesus said, tarry here in Jerusalem. And they took that to mean we got to get out on our knees and call on Jesus. There's nowhere in the scripture that you're supposed to get out and call on Jesus and tarry. Tarry means just to wait. Wait until you're led by the Spirit. That's what it means. Wait until you make sure you're led by the Spirit. We said, no, we, gotta, we need some more Jesus because we ain't got enough. So they sensationalize it. And then the music is hyped all the way up. And everything is electrified. And because we ain't based it on nothing. We just ain't got nothing to stand on. We don't even know who God is. So we just, we, it just, and so Romans, they seeking to establish what? Their own righteousness. You find this with people. We used to, have, we had in this ministry for a while, everybody walking around like they, they were really spiritual. I'm the pastor. I didn't have what they had. I knew I was born again. I knew I was saved. But I didn't, I didn't act like that. But the people who came around me and joined the ministry around me, they started acting like they had more than what I had. I thought, well, they, had, they got something. I, I wasn't I arguing with them. I just saw it. And then the other people who were with me and around them were intimidated by their sensationalized spirituality because they gave the impression that they had more of God than anybody else. You don't have to do all that. You don't have to do all that. So spiritualized righteousness is where you, you live in your life free of corruption. Sensationalized righteousness. You know, at one time, I grew up in this, we, we had a lot of church. One time, I had been some church. I've been singing in all these groups and just having a wonderful time. And we, were going, we, we went to church where you tear it. And you called on Jesus. We sang in every hole in this church around here. We was in this choir, unity choir. And we were all, we just sang everywhere. So they'd have hole in this church. They'd get on that piano. We sung till 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And we called on Jesus. We had a good, we going on. So after about, that's going on two or three years. One, one, this, I'm, this is a true story. This is what happened to me. I got to where I could just sense that what I sense was the presence of God. It's like, oh, the law was everywhere. I could, I, in my emotions, in my thought, in my mind. You're talking about being a dichotomist. God was in me then. <laughs> And everything was just, just three weeks. I went to work at Bartow, and I was just, I could just, just do this and just be aware of the presence of God. I was just, it was just, I don't, have you all had an experience like that where you just, it's just like God is, the, the, the power of God is all just right there. It's an experience you will always remember. That happened to me about three weeks. It was like, Three weeks. It was so much so that I got out one Saturday morning and went down to Bishop Ross' house about 9 o'clock. I couldn't wait till he got up, but I, I just went to his house and rang his doorbell. I, I figured he'd be up by 9 o'clock. So I went and rang the doorbell down there on Carver and rang the doorbell. And his wife came to the door, and then I said, well, I, I, I'm Walter I'd like to speak to Bishop, to the bishop. And she said, who? And she told me to go in. So anyway, so I'm, I guess I'm 24. I guess, whatever. And so he came to the door, and I told him I'd like to talk to him. I, was telling, I started telling him. He said, well, come on in and sit down. So I went in and sat down, and I told him what I just told you. And I said, well, what's happening to me? He said, the Lord is just dealing with you, and the Lord is just you know, that's the presence of the Lord. Well, I knew that. <laughs> but that's all we can say. We don't know no more. If somebody tell you they know, they don't. It's a mystery. And the next week, it left. And it was I was so, I felt so empty. 
it was like God did not even exist and he was nowhere around and I never knew him at all and I felt if I had the feel I could do anything I wanted to do with no consequences no penalty I can just do anything I want to do and that's just fine I had no moral compass at all nothing pushing me in any direction something like spiritualized righteousness and that went on for about three or four weeks from one extreme of total presence to the other extreme of absolute being alone and at the end of that month and a half experience the voice of the Lord in a way came to me like this most folk live for this sensationalized righteousness where they feel the presence of God and they it's like a fix and they need it but if you can serve me and be faithful to me when you don't feel anything then you're walking by faith that's what he told me and from that day on it doesn't matter whether the sun shine, if I feel it, if I don't feel it. Whatever I'm doing, to me, is the righteousness of God. So uh, the sensationalization of our faith has hurt us many times because we don't do things. We get in and say, well, I don't, I, I'll do it when I feel like it, I'll feel when I'm feeling led. There are many things that you need to do when you don't feel led. You've got to do it because it's right. Or you just have to do it. Washing your dishes, washing your car, taking, your, taking yourself to a doctor, thinking about yourself. I don't feel like it right now. You know, you can't live by your feelings. But there are many Christians who just wait for this feeling. And they ain't got nothing because they've been waiting on the feeling. There's a song, ain't it? It's a worldly song and it's a Christian song. I got a feeling everything going to be all right. I just got a feeling. That's all it is, is a feeling. Because it ain't going to be all right. Fool, it ain't going to be all right. It's just feeling. You got to be led by the Spirit of God who will use the Word of God to bring it to light to your life. So that's the spiritualized righteousness where you're not subject to graft, bribery, dishonesty, and fraudulent activity. It's just spiritualized. It's a way you walk. God seeks those who worship Him, and those who worship Him must worship Him how? Spirit. And when you're in the Spirit, you ain't got no bribery, deceit. You, you, integrate, you integrate integrity, accuracy, correctness, and precision. You ain't pushing none. You ain't got no axe to grind. I'm not up here trying to sell y'all something because I need your money. That's what I'm saying. And you find the people kind of doing a, I can't preach in 20 minutes and make everybody happy. And they don't know nothing. Their lives don't change. They have a wonderful experience and they all stay in that sensational little mode. It's a sensational mode. Then number three. He goes to Romans chapter, the third kind of righteousness is in verse number four. I call this legitimized. Or you can say legalized. Or you can say criminalized. Righteousness. When you legalize something, you make it legitimate and permissible by law. Our representatives will get together. Somebody will suggest it. It gets enacted in the law when it is signed. It is permissible by law, by a vote of our representatives, of elected public officials. Something that was previously illegal by law is now what? Legalized by personal, by our representatives using the law of agreement. So, and verse chapter 10 and verse 4, let's read. Read, for Christ. It's the end of any kind of law where you can be right with God. Read to what? Everyone who believes. Now, he gets into this thing about this business, about legitimized, legalized, and criminalized righteousness. Look at this. This is amazing to me. The first example, look at the next verse. Look at verse 5. Then he, he says, now Christ, read, back up one day. Look at what he says. Look, verse four, verse, go back to verse 4. Read. Verse 4. Read. Christ 
is the end of the law. Say the end of the law. Say it again. End of the law. For though, for what? For righteousness before God by faith, what? To everyone who believes. Who do Jesus said, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who believe that? Because that's gonna be your pattern, my friend. Next verse. Then he says this, verse 5. For Moses, the lawgiver, the law was given through Moses, but grace and the truth came through Jesus Christ. Read, for Moses writes about this righteousness, which has come from what? Obeying and doing some kind of what? Law. That if you're going to operate by these laws, thank God for our country, but we don't operate by these laws. The laws are not made for a what? A righteous person. If you're not interested in bri bribery, fraudulent activity, dishonest behavior, you don't need no law. Christians ought to be the best citizens in the country. But Moses had to deal with these, uh, these servants who were not born again. He says, for Moses, that's the example in verse number 5, writes about the righteousness which is the law. If you're going to go by these laws, then what? The man who does these things, that's his righteousness under the law. Now what? Shall what? Live by him. Look at this one right here. Let's look at some of these laws. Three laws. Look at, look at 1 Corinthians 7, 39. 7, 1 Corinthians 7, 39. Then I will go to Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 39. Then I will go. Oh, she quick, boy. I mean, here we go. Let's read. Oh, wife. Here's these laws. Notice some of these laws are always affecting women. Read. A wife is bound by law. Not the law, but by what? Law. What? As long as a husband is alive. Well, what if he's an abuser? Can I get rid of him? No, you got to stay there and take it, says some preachers. The Pharisees say, no, you're bound as long as she lives. But he, he's an abuser. He's, he, I might kill him. You come out better killing him and ask forgiveness than to live with him and get a divorce from him because then you can't do nothing because God won't forgive you. He can forgive you everything but murder and divorce. That's what they, some, these people teach. But a wife is bound, this is the law of Moses. Read, a wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But, here we go, what? If a husband is dead, some women, I wish he'd die with all the poison in But if he be dead, read, she is at liberty to be married to whomever, whom she wishes. But make sure that this time you're married well. Because you know, the man, if he was a real Christian, he wouldn't be treating you like this. The next verse. Is that next verse? But she is happier if she remains as she is according to my judgment as I think also I have the Spirit of God. Look at, um, look at uh, Romans chapter, what I tell you next? Romans chapter 7. Here's another one. It's about these women. I want to free y'all up, but some of y'all can't handle it. Read Romans chapter, Romans chapter 7 and verse number 1. This is, now again, we dealt with spiritualized righteousness. No extra grind. Number two, sensationalized righteousness. Now here's legitimized, legalized, and criminalized righteousness. Romans, read. Or, come on, let's read with the interest, everybody. Or, do you not know, brethren? Read. For I speak to those. Y'all know the law? Y'all going to try to hold somebody else to it? Read. That the law has dominion. Then God said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and have what? Dominion. That the law has what? Dominion over the man. When you are a Christian, you don't want to try to go by a set of laws. Because now, when you break up an, an area where we have not created some laws, now we got to get together and make a law and then pass the law and enact it in the law, legislation into law, and then now, so it won't happen no more. So where there's no law, there's no, 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 no penalty of guilt. So what? That the law has what? Dominion over man what? As long as he lives. Next verse. Verse 2. And we're going to go on three next. Read. For the woman. Read again. The woman. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's get together. Come on. For the woman. Now we don't have one woman now. But it applies to all of them. Read. The woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband. Well, what, ain't she living too? 
Why is she bound just because he is alive? But if the husband dies, that's the only way she can get free. This doesn't sound like liberty to me. Don't you glad Jesus came? But if the husband what dies, that's the only way what she is released from the law of her husband. Verse number three. Ain't that something? That, 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 this is in your Bible. It's been in there all along. You just hadn't been reading it. Verse number three. Read. So then, if here we go again. So then, if, now we open the door of our imagination. If I could be a bird, if I could take the wings of the morning, if I were, you see, you open your imagination. If what? While her husband, what, lives, she be what? Married, she married another man, guess what? She will be called an adulteress. Oh, yeah, I don't need, I got a lot to say on that, but go on. But, if her husband, they got to kill him. She got to kill him. She, the only way she can get rid of him under the law, the joker got to die. I need to kill him. They need, I wish you was dead. This is the law of Moses. I don't want to be under that system. If her husband lives, she's married to another man. She shall be called an adulteress. Read. But if her husband dies, guess what? She is free. Thank God that he dead. You don't want to live in a relationship where you wish your husband was dead. I don't think so. So men, we need to step up our game and be the best husband we can be. We want to make him make, be so nice to that woman until she... You know what? Let me tell y'all something. When you don't take care of something, whether it's a car, a house, or clothes, or your body, the universe has laws that you may not even know about. You'll eventually lose it because you don't show any appreciation for it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So that's why that expression, one man's what? Trash. Can become another man's treasure. Why? Because you got somebody in your life you won't appreciate them. You won't do no nice for them. You don't want to hold them back. You think they, you're jealous. You got some issues yourself. And you got some hang-ups yourself. You don't appreciate them. You don't show your love toward them. They, 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 they wish you was dead. I, I, you need to die so I can be free. But we're not under the law. Wait, wait. Come on, y'all. Y'all y'all having too much fun in here. Come on, wait. Wait, wait. She is what? Free. Notice she's free from what? that law because there are a whole lot others but she's free from what that law read so that she is no longer adulterous though she's married to another man now I want to stop there but I won't go on the next verse says now look take that analogy well, all y'all need somebody to tell y'all what to do. Get up in the morning. Go to job on time. Don't be uh, jive around on the clock. Uh, be responsible. Give tithes and offerings. Be productive. Uh, take care of your mind. Renew your mind. Live on top of the world. Enjoy your life. So forth. And then the next verse, he says what? Next verse, verse 4 says what? Therefore. Everybody read. Therefore. My brethren. Now he's going to appeal to them and say, What? Therefore, now what? Now, brethren, you can't be no brother while you're married to somebody who mistreats you and then you're supposed to love and respect. There ain't no brother in that. The best thing you can have in a relationship is to be a brother and a sister to your husband or your wife. You like brothers and sisters. Read. Therefore, what? My brethren, read. You also have become dead to the law by being what? In the body of Christ. That you may what? Be married to another man. Who is the man now? To him who was raised from the dead that you should start bearing fruit and children too as fruit to God. So use the analogy of your dead husband and think about all the things that you were under when you were bound up 
through the flesh and the disease, these of the flesh, all these other things. But now when you became a Christian, it's like your husband died. And all your old boyfriends and old girlfriends, they died. Now you ain't got but one left. I ain't going to buy it. Let's five. Verse 5. Verse 5. Read. For when we were what? In the flesh. Because when you're in the flesh, this is the problem. We were in the flesh, what? The sinful passions which were aroused by the law, which say you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. They, they say what, show what you couldn't do. What? Were what? They were at work in our members to bear fruit, and it destroyed everything that we tried to do. Next verse. Verse 6. Read. Verse 6. Read. But now. Say, but now. Say, but now. Say, but now. But now. Hallelujah. What? We have been delivered. Glory to God. I'm led by the Spirit. I don't need 10 things on my refrigerator to tell me what I need to do for my life. I need to hear the voice of the Lord leading me in my heart. When he speaks, he says, harden not your heart. As you did in the wilderness. Having what? Died to what we were what? Held by. And some of you could be held by it today. Because you got your old ways. And you refuse to change. And you think that's going to continue to help you. And you've been in there so long until you think that's right. You don't want to need the laws. I don't need no law. If you live by the Spirit of God. Read. So that what? We should serve what? Serve God and produce this righteousness in what? The newness of the Spirit. And not in the old, oldness of the letter of these laws. And what do we do in the Methodist church? Lord have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep these laws. And we sung it every Sunday. As it was in the beginning, so is now and ever shall be. We sung ourselves into poverty, sickness, sin, and death. Every Sunday. I'm not criticizing the church. I'm, the doctrine is what I'm talking about. He said, you beware of the doctrine of these Pharisees. Look at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10. We're talking about this woman again. <laughs> I ain't never got that much out of that passage before. Romans chapter 7, I, I mean, that, that was something, wasn't it? Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Read. For as many, read everybody, come on, let's go. For as many as are of what? Works. Oh, they're trying to be right by obeying a set of rules. Go on. You are, let me, let me tell you about what you, what's really going on in your life. You are where? Come on, come on. Let's read along. You're not strong enough. What is it? You are what? Under the curse. You live as if you got a curse on you. That's what's going on. You won't listen to the Spirit of God speak and then change your old hard-headed ways. But you will just dig your heels in and you bring yourself under the curse more and more. But this is the way it is. This is where I am. For it is written, read, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in that book of the law. And then do them. You ain't doing them, all of them either. And you're living under the curse. I don't want to be under no curse. And look what it said. Now, this is the background to the next verse. What does the next verse say? In verse number 11, read, But that no one is justified by the law. You might be justified in the eyes of the law of the government. The CDC says do this. The government says to pay your taxes. The government says you should have insurance on your car. You might be justified and righteous in the eyes of the law of the land. But none of that comes into play when it comes to what? In, this, just the, in the what? The sight of God. It is evident. You can drive 50 miles an hour in a 50 miles an hour zone. They ain't going to make you right with God. They're going to make you right with the government. Read. For what? The just. The Zadik. Both words justified is Zadik. I mean, that's, that's Hebrew. In the Greek, DK, Dikaios. You're not righteous by the law, not in the sight of God. For what? The Dikaios, the just, shall what? Live by faith. The Spirit of God is talking to me. I got to act on it. The Spirit of God is leading me. You can back it up with the Word of God. I just feel led to do this. I feel led to give. I, I, I feel led to give. I said, I confessed it five years. I feel led to give $50,000 to the Lord. I ain't know why. I found out since we did it. 
We gave $100,000. I found out why we did it. I ain't know why. I ain't know nothing about it. We just refinanced 10 pieces of property, I think. I ain't know nothing about it. We gave $100,000, remember, last year, and $50,000 in 2005. We refinanced our property for $1.5 million. We paid off the first mortgages, and did, guess how many $100,000 we ended up with? $851,000. That $100,000 that we gave this church came back eight times. I didn't know this, my friend. Give and it shall be given unto you. How? Good measure. How? Press down. How? Shaking together. And what? Running over. What's the next one? Shall what? Men give unto you. And here it is. For what? For with the measure that you choose, you decide, you want to use, it shall be measured. How? Back to you again. It's more outside your job. It's outside. You got to have a business. You got to have a business. Amen. And four or five other, it's out there. Shall live by faith. Next verse. 13, you're 12, right? Yet, yet what? The law, it ain't, a, it ain't got to do with your faith. It's not a faith, what? But the man who does them laws, you make sure you live by every single one of them. They include the Ten Commandments. Honor the Lord, thou shalt not lie by faith. All this, all this, all this. Next verse, 13. But wait, Christ has what? He's redeemed us from the source of the curse. You got it? I don't care if the curse that people try to twist the scriptures and say the, the curse on the black man is that he's black. Over there in Genesis chapter 9. Well, it was Noah and uh, he had these sons and he cursed his grandson, but his grandson slept with his wife, with Noah's wife, with his grandmama. That's what he did. And the man got up out of his wine, he was drunk, and he got up out of his wine, and he cursed. He said, cursed shall you be. It was not because he was black. It was because he violated that man's, he uncovered that man's nakedness. That's the, the, the phrase is, uncovered his father's nakedness. That's what it was. And they twist the scripture that years ago, they would say, the reason the curse on all y'all is that you, the curse is you're black because you're Noah's offspring. Ain't no such. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God, my friends. But Christ, if that, if that was a curse, and if it were true, guess what? Christ has redeemed us, what? Come on, let's go. From the curse. Any curse in any law, anywhere, even the law of the root man. I don't care what your mama said to you when you were a child. I don't care what your daddy said to you when he was mad. And they put something on you and said something to you and you can't get over it. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law of your parents. Having what? Become a curse, praise the Lord. For every one of us, for it is written, read, cursed is everyone who hangs on the Verse number 14. That what? The blessing of Abraham. Now if you do believe the curse is off of you, then it's, on, it's the blessing what? Of Abraham. What's going to happen? It might come where? On all y'all Gentiles. Who, who can understand what it means to be well in Christ Jesus. Read. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith in God. So number one, there's this spiritualized righteousness. Just be, go, when you're led by the Spirit, go neutral. And whatever the God tells you to do in your heart, do it. You don't know why. Be led by the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit, in a very unique way, these are the sons of God, who is the Spirit. He's the God of the universe. He lives in your heart. Lastly, number two is sensationalized righteousness. They whip it up so you can get, and they ain't got no facts. Number three, legalized righteousness. They make some, like for now, used to be abortion was illegal. For 70 years, abortion has been legal. Now the Supreme Court is trying to wrestle with it. it. might become illegal again. Just because the laws change on the books don't mean you'll change, your God changes. Let them children come in. These children, we, boy, we got, a whole, we got a whole lot to repent for. Christians. 
bringing people under the law. Telling women that they can't get rid of the husband. The only way they can get rid of him is he's dead. Well, kill him then. No, we can't kill him. We go to jail then. At least you'll be free of him. You'll be locked up, but you'll be with him. But you try to figure out what you try to figure out an answer to the problem. And God has given us answers. But you got to study to show yourself approved. We're in Christ. We're not bound by any law. And we're free. And if he can forgive us our sins, all these things we messed up, truly he can, give, he can forgive you for divorcing one who you would have killed. Or living with resentment that the long as, you, long as you're with them, you wish they was dead. That's not a good, in, that's iniquity in your heart. You don't want to do that. You need to tell them, you're going to treat me better than this. No, I better. I'm going to treat myself better than this. I love me better than this. Turn to somebody and say, I love me. No, say to yourself, say, I love me better than this. Better. Say it again. Say, I love me better than this. Better. Say it again. Say, I love me better than this. Better. Absolutely. Yes, Lastly, moralized righteousness. Moralized righteousness to explain or interpret things morally or give a moral quality or direction to accountability. In other words, moral. People use the word, he's a moral person. Oh, that's morality. They don't want to bring morality into the legal system of the government. That's legality. But we, as Christians, as believers in the God, we believe in morality. What is morality? You mean that some, morality says this, that somebody had to create everything that we know. We don't know who it is. But he created every, the clouds, the galaxy, the hemispheres, the rocks, and everything, the trees, the houses, the man of stats, whatever you want to call him. They call him God. They call him our Father. Whatever you want to call him. Somebody had to create everything. And there's a special relationship through Jesus Christ. We are accountable to him. That's spiritualized righteousness. We're accountable to somebody. You can't live in this world. It's called spiritual authority. You are under spiritual authority. And it doesn't matter who you work for, where you go to church, as far as who you submit to. You need to be careful where you go to church because it's going to determine what you hear. And what you hear is going to determine what you believe. And what you believe is going to term, put you in a position to receive more or, or less. Or you get stalemated and stuck. So moralized right says that I don't care. The Supreme Court can say gay marriage. It can say abortion. It can say whatever it says, and the laws change based upon powers over the years, over centuries, and over decades. Because you remember, separate but equal used to be legal, right? Come on. It took 70 years, but it became what? Unconstitutional. But they said one time it was what? Constitutional. So these things happen, and you, that's why you pray for those what? who are in, Pray for the people in authority. Intercede for them. Appeal on their behalf. Lord, bless them with some sense. Because they are, as long as they don't, that's another thing. So moralized righteousness. means I'm accountable to the creator of the universe through Jesus Christ to be honest with, with uh, not subject to fraudulent activity or dishonest means or uh, 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 anything like that or what I call uh, uh, typically involving bribery and things like that. And so, so God sees me. He's everywhere. And I might not I might not see him, but I know who I'm accounting to. And I don't, have, I don't need you standing over me. If you're the kind of person that you only do right because somebody is watching you, you are a crook already. You're a crook! Did you feel it? <laughs> so whoever God is, Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Back to Romans. This is where we got it from, right here. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. These four, four things, four kinds of righteousness. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Read. But, he says, by contrast, what? The righteousness which is of faith. Got that? Read again. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Now we bring it on home. God lives in your heart. 
He's too big to live anywhere else. He's so big he can only live in your heart by your faith in him. And the, to be right with him, it requires what? Faith in God. You see why you need to put all of it in him? See? Otherwise, you're going to put it in the sensationalized, spiritualized, or legalized, trying to be right like that. And here it says, but the righteousness which is of faith, what? It speaks. Read. Do not say in your heart who will ascend all the way up to heaven and bring Christ down. Next verse. Bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to what? Go to hell and what? Bring, next verse. Bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? Get ready. Let's show you. The word is what? Near you. Where is it? Also where? In your mouth. Uh, and the third witness is what? Guess what? No, no, did you see the three witnesses? Did you see the three witnesses? Look. The word is what? Number one, what? Near you. Secondly, where? In your mouth. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be what? Established. And the third word is where? In your heart. It's got to be in your mouth. It's got to be in your heart. And it's got to be, you got to believe it's near you. It's right on the tip of your tongue. It's near you, my friend. It's in your heart. Everything you need. Nobody can keep anything from you. Only you can. The word is near you in your mouth. Three witnesses right there in that verse. Go and read. That is what? The word of faith, which we preach. Go on. Here with verse 9. Read. That what? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and then what? Believe. That's why I said, who do you all say I am? Believe what? In your heart? That what? It was as if what? God what? Raise him from the dead the same way you can be saved. Next verse. You can same way you can be saved. Go on. For why? How did this thing work? With your heart, what? Man believes. Unto what? That's your faith working. Go on. That's how you get right with God. Go on and what? With a mouth. Confession is made unto what? Salvation. That's how you bring your tail out. You bring your tail out your situation with your mouth. The that's one of the best things, one of the best messages I can preach. The blessing is in my mouth. The blessing is in my mouth. I told a lady, she said, I said, ma'am, your bill is over $4,000 behind. I said, we, we give you an ev eviction notice. She wouldn't say that. I witnessed, started to witness to the lady. I said, ma'am, you finna get put out. She said, I'm just quiet. I don't want to say anything. I, I, they get embarrassed. They feel weak. They feel powerless. They don't, want to, they, don't, they don't want to face it. They think if I just run from it and hide, don't say nothing, it's, they think God's going to take care of it. See, that's, see what I'm talking about? Oh, God's going to take care of it. I hope you all know better. I told her, I said, ma'am, I said, the Bible say the word is in your mouth. I say, you didn't say anything to me. And you're behind. You better start using your mouth. Because the word that you need, your blessing, is in your own mouth. You wouldn't tell me. You wouldn't tell anybody else that you're in the situation. So now you got this on you. The blessing is, do you know that lady started talking? And she got to get that, she got that thing. She said, I'm going to file my income tax. I'm going to get my money early. And I'm going to pay this rent. And she went on and said, she went on and said, and you know, she did it. In three weeks, she paid $4,800. The blessed is it. Say the blessed is in my mouth. Come on. Say it again. Say it again. You're not strong. Say it again. The blessed is in my mouth. Again. Say it again. The blessed is in my mouth. And with the mouth confession is made unto save your own self. Go on. Next verse. Read. Next verse. Come on. Let's see. We're getting ready to go now. For the scripture says. Whoever what? Believes on who you say he is. What? You'll never be ashamed. Next verse. Will never be ashamed. Read. And there is no what distinction. I don't care whether if you're Jew from Jerusalem or Greek from the street. What? For the same Lord over all is what? Plutonium. Pluto, he's rich to all who call upon him. Next. For whoever. Indefinite pronoun. It doesn't matter who it is. What? Whoever calls on it. Whoever calls on Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Whoever calls on the name. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll be saved. Because you got to call on him out of your heart. Out of your head. And he's near you. Go on next verse. How then read. How then shall they call on him. And who they ain't believe. Because people just say, well, who is Jesus? And they never say, but who is he to you personally? 
Oh, we love Jesus. We love Jesus. Yeah, but he ain't helping you none. How did they call him who did not believe this about him? Go on. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard this about him? Go on. And how shall the preachers preach about, how shall they hear without a preacher who knows about this? Next verse. Read, oh, read, read, read. And how shall they preach unless they be sent? It is as if God has to give this open eyes to this. Read as it is written. When you learn this thing, notice what, how my feet look. These, these, are my, these are where my feet look. Read. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. I can get out my shoes now, you see. <laughs> but if you preach this message, it's good. It's good. It, it says when people come to you with this message, it's like they, their feet are beautiful. Just coming is it's a good message. It's the gospel of peace. And bring what? Glad tidings. Bring y'all some good things. I think that woman whose husband, who got to stay married to that man until he is dead, I think that's some good news, don't y'all? Next verse. But read. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They know about it, but they don't obey it. They're still under the law. They, they got Jesus and they mix it up with the law. But what? Isaiah says what? Lord, who in this building here today has believed like this? Who are all these people up in here today that believe like this? They, don't, they come and they, do they, believe, they really believe like this? He says. Next verse, 17. So then read. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now write this down. A-E-I-O-U. I take my time. You see, you pastor, you went over this morning. Go home. <laughs> I understand what you mean. I appreciate your time. And I'm not trying to abuse your time. But we come together once or twice a week for two hours. We got to get something out of it. And I'll know what I'm saying because I ain't getting nothing out of it. I know you're not either. But I preach my own self happy. <laughs> and when I get happy, I know you ought to be. And if you ain't, I can't help you. I've done all I could. All right. Look at this. What am I going to tell y'all do? Now, here's God. Then I close. The A stands for God, who is the creator. He is absolute. Versus relative. Now, relative means it depends on the situation. Jesus helps you to deal with your situations, but God is absolute. He doesn't change. Jesus can help you. Number two, God is eternal. He lives forever. Versus temporal, meaning worldly, only in Jesus. You got Jesus, but you, you will die. You will die. We will die. These earthly bodies will go to the graveside. And so we're temporal, but he lives in our bodies. But God is eternal, and the eternal part of us, who is a spirit, will go to be with God. You listen? So we're like God. He's absolute. So are we. We're eternal like him. Thirdly, he is impersonal. God, the creator of the universe, you can't see him. He's impersonal. As God he is versus personal. Only as Jesus Christ. Only in Jesus Christ does God become personal to you. Only in Jesus Christ can he become personal to you. I hear myself saying that. Only in Jesus Christ does the creator God become personal to you. That's why he said, who do you say I am? Through the miracles that he did, the power that he did, through all the signs and wonders that he did, his virgin birth, how he, everything that happened in his life, he had to be the son of God. And he said, who do you say he is? Then he says, number four, God. As God, he's objective. But as Jesus, he's subjective. In Jesus Christ, he's subjective. He's, he's in your heart. You can, in your mouth. He's near you. It's a personal thing. It's subjective. When you talk to God, it's objective, outside of you. And number five, un he's unlimited. These are A-E-I-O-U, the vowels. So he's unlimited. God, God is boundless, unlimited, everywhere. Omnipotent, all-powerful. Omniscient, all-knowing. Holy in a class all by himself. He said, y'all be like me. Be holy like I am. Then he says this, but as our Savior, Jesus Christ, he is uh, limited. Only God, he is, God is limited through his ability to reach people in this world through us. That's our righteousness. And we have to reach people with the gospel. Share our faith with them. Not some of them, but share our faith. Amen. So no one, 
is spiritualized righteousness. Be neutral. Let the spirit lead you. Just like a boat floating down the river. Just go with it. Number two, sensationalized righteousness. You ain't got to work it up. Seeking to establish your own righteousness. Number three, legalized, legitimized, or criminalized righteousness. And number four, moralized righteousness. Amen. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Please stand your feet. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Again. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and great. I give honor to your name in the world. Amen. I give honor to your name. Oh Lord, honor to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be. I give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be. Musicians, play, go ahead. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. I'm glad he freed y'all women up and freed us up too, amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He can set you free everywhere you're bound. Find you a verse. Find you a scripture. He will liberate you and set you free. I sing, I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be put. Hallelujah! I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and great. Play it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Worship the Lord. He whom the Son set free is free indeed. give worship. I give worship to your name. Oh Lord, worship to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give worship to your name. Oh Lord, worship to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great 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 and greatly to be praised for your name for your name is great and greatly to be for your name is great 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 your name. He's greater than cancer. Greater than sickness. 
greater than fear for your name greater than all hammers for your name greater than loneliness for your name is great for your name is great and greatly to I sing glory to you one more time I sing glory to your name oh Lord glory to your name Oh, hallelujah. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing glory to your name. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to I preach my own self happy. I can just tell you the truth. I love the Lord and I ain't perfect. I'm not as good as it get and nor am I the best that there is. <laughs> but he said, here always the Lord our God is one. You just love the Lord with your heart, with all your strength and all your soul and all your mind and your neighbors as yourself. That's all it's all about. It's not about judging anybody. But I'm so glad today that these women have been set free. And other areas of the law even set us free. That's what it's about, my friend. So he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is. The grace. Oh, Lord, we were so long without it. We were so far from it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. <laughs> the love. It says the love of God. It's the communion of the Holy Spirit with us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. Thank you for staying over. God bless you and have a wonderful day.